Located 60 miles north from Los Angeles, California, is the city of Oxnard. At 7 in the morning, the residents of this lovely beach town prepare for their day. In the heart of downtown Oxnard is KO Boxing Gym, home to undefeated boxer Hugo Centeno, better known as The Boss. I had the opportunity to sit down with this young fighter to get an insight of his remarkable story. Hugo went from being turned down by local boxing gyms for being too young, and today he is one of the hottest prospects in the sport of boxing. Let's take a better look at his story on this episode of The Update. Amateur, you had an impressive record of 90 wins and eight losses. You did it all out of your garage. How were you able to do something like that in such a small area? Um, you know, it's just so much experience uh, developing after a while. Um, it was my dad's idea. He created a two-car garage into a gym, and you know, we just trained like hungry fighters. Uh, we were young and hungry fighters. He had about 10 of us on the on the team, and we all just worked off extremely hard. What was the setup like and what was the training like? Uh, we had one of everything. We had one speed bag, one punching bag, and one double in. And when it came down to sparring, we would just move everything out of the way. Everyone would just stand on the sides and we would spar right there in the middle of the garage. You got turned away from a gym when you were younger. Did that put a chip on your shoulder, making you want to show everyone and look what you missed out on? A little bit. Not, not, not so much necessarily towards that specific gym, but just towards all, all the people who didn't believe in me, all the doubters, you know. People who would uh, put me down coming up, tell me, you know, you're not going to be able to make it. And, you know, now we're at 18 0 with nine knockouts. What is the hardest part about transitioning from being an amateur fighter to a pro fighter? The point system. The scoring system is a lot different. Uh, in the amateurs, you know, you only have three rounds, sometimes one minute rounds, two minute rounds as you get older. And you just have to do it quick and in a hurry. You have to score as many points as you can uh, before the round's over. And then you only have three rounds. And in the professional, I mean, you have, you start off with four three-minute rounds, and then on your way up, and now I'm at 10 minute, I'm at 10, 10 rounds, three minutes each, so that's 30 minutes of straight boxing. So it's a big difference. You are one of the many new fighters coming out of Oxnard. What's it like being part of this exclusive club of fighters that are reaching success out of this small town? It's an incredible feeling. Uh, just knowing that I can compare myself or, or be in the same circle as a caliber elite team from Oxnard, California especially since it's become such a hot bid for boxing. Now, what is the hardest part when it comes to training for a fight? A lot of people say, you know, they like to brawl to learn how to take a punch, but you can never learn how to take a punch. So for me, the hardest thing would be uh, sparring. Sparring is the right, sparring is a tough thing. You know, I always you have to be uh, alert, stay on your toes, be active. So all that put into one, it just, it takes a toll on your body. Now, you mentioned your father as your trainer. How is it having him in your corner? Is he harder on you than the rest of the fighters, or does it work out for you too? I felt like it was a little harder on me because just being in the gym, you know, I felt like whatever I did, um, if I did anything wrong, if I did anything right, uh, I would take it home with me and I would just expect to hear something from them. So it was a lot more pressure on me if I did anything wrong. So I would just try to work off as hard as I could in the gym. So if, if, so he could tell me when I got home, you know, good job, you know, you did, you did great. And uh, me and my dad, you know, we have three different types of relationships. Uh, we have a uh, father-son, uh, coach and boxer, and then friend and friend. And at first, it was it was a little tough for me to learn how how to read them, how to come towards them. You know, sometimes I'll try to come towards them as a as a friend, and he would come towards me as a coach, or you know, it was just always the opposite. So I finally learned how to read them, and and now it just seems to be working great. Now. Before a fight, you know, those last couple of minutes when the music's playing and everyone's huddled around you and you're about to walk out, what is the feeling you get inside right before you get to the ring? I get butterflies. You know, you start feeling those bubble guts. Um, it's just, it's a great feeling. And you start hearing the crowd cheering and the butterflies start kicking in. And it's not so much about being nervous, it's just anxious. You know, so much hard work, two months of hard training every single day, dieting, everything that you've put into it comes to down to those next 30 minutes, 30 minutes of pure boxing. And, you know, there's there's no other feeling like it. You know, you have that limelight just shining on you, you the music getting you pumped up. Uh, just, it's an amazing feeling. Who were some of the fighters that you grew up admiring when you were coming up as an amateur? Oscar De La Hoya growing up, you know, I like to uh, admire fighters that I could compare myself to, something, something that they have that I have that I could relate to. Uh, one thing that I had was a lanky frame that I still have is a lanky frame. Um, 
similar to Oscar Del Hoya growing up, Diego Corrales, Eric Morales, uh, Salvador Sanchez, uh, great fighters. And it's not so much just the specific fighter, it's the little things they did, you know, like the jab, footwork, things like that. Now, when you finally do reach that point of fighting for a world title, who would be your dream match? Who would you want to fight against? You know, I don't have a, a particular fighter that I would like to fight, but, um, you know, whoever I, whenever I get there, I want to fight the best. Whoever's at the top, you know, top 10, top 5, number 1, that's who I want to fight. Whoever's there by the time I get there.